or three revelations uh, that I call troubling revelations. I want you to help me pray before you leave here tonight. One of them is what I call an artificial cave. Or it's a cave of entrapment. In that cave, the Lord revealed, there are several people in that cave. It's at, it's at the side of a road. And there are several people doing something down there, something really just sit up here in the vision. But there's one person voice down there which is known by the visionary. And he heard that person down there doing what everybody else is doing. And he said to the person, come up from down there. And the person said, no, I'm not coming up. I am satisfied. I'm fine. It's one of the most heart-rending revelations. One of the most heart-rending vision. And I'm praying it's conditional. It's terrible. There's somebody in, in the, the cave. cave. But it's an artificial cave just by the side of the road. And it appears as if they will never come out. Did you hear what I said? It appears as if they never come out because their mind has been taken over. They said, I am satisfied. I am satisfied. I want them to pray. You soon come back to it. I break that hole from that person in that artificial cave. Sugar bugger, sucker bugger, tabagat. And that person is a mature believer. Like you see today, you see, mature believer are just shocking. Shocking, 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 shocking. You know, over this weekend, as we speak here on Sunday, we speak here. And let me tell you something. When we speak in the pulpit, we don't play. There's a verse in the Bible, I think it's First John 2, 21, I'm not sure, which says there's no lie of the truth. And folks, when they realize that as God clarifies, it is now understood that what they say is impossible. It becomes foolishness according to 2 Samuel 15, 31. It is covered now that all they say is foolishness. Then they go into what we call accusation. Accusation. Listen, you got to be careful. You got to be very, 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 very careful. As we see it before our eyes, solid, strong people, my God. And anything you hear with us here in the pulpit, everything can be proven. Everything is not just for you to say, please trust us or whatever. No, no, no. It can be proven. A lot of stuff is, is still on the internet. Come on, somebody. We could tell you the date where it is. <laughs> Come on. Almost everything done here. My God, my God, are tabulated. And available, anybody who would want to accuse this pulpit of not being truthful, come on, come personally, man. Don't hide. Don't hide around and drop words and, and smartly drop words for others to hear. My God. Because you want to go, go into another level of accusation. Because the ones you have made so far is now being shown as a failure. For the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3 and verse 9, he said, help me that verse, man. Come on, come on. He said, he said they shall proceed no further, for their folly, their folly shall be manifested. And all the result to every time, all the result to every time, my God, is the work of the father of lies, Satan. And they come with accusation and hope it stick. They say it and hope somebody heard them. My God. My God. The things we, we told over this weekend, even about those people we talk about, how, how they have been good, that's like 10%. That's like 10%. There's so much more. And it would cancel the accusation that came a month ago. It was canceling out so bad. You know? But we leave it alone because peace is better. Peace is better. So we leave it alone. The next revelation is, is, is what I call retribution accusation. The Lord is revealing a situation where somebody 
or some people find themselves in trouble with God. Let me say it that way. Because I said, all I can be is a shepherd. They find themselves in trouble with God. And things aren't working out so well. That's what, and they're going to accuse, accuse the leadership that they are the one who caused it. Did you hear what I said? They are going to accuse them that they are the one who caused it. The thing that they have caused to come upon them. Remember, you're one, right? See, you see, you see, I'm giving these revelations. <laughs> Listen, it's all written out already, and somebody have it. Because some of them are from earlier this year. Are you there? What I'm saying now, it didn't just come there. There are folks who have it waiting. Revelations from like March last year, March this year. My God. Because I'm telling you, whatever said here, it's all tabulated and all proven. And you only have to have the bravery to come say, give me the evidence of this and you will get it. And peradventure, you may, you may repent. Yes, that accusation is coming. But you know what? It appears to me that these revelations we are giving right now are conditional. Change away. We hope it's conditional. Change away. That one in the artificial cave be delivered in the name of Jesus. Because listen, even if you're not delivered and you go your way and, and whatever, we have done what we should do. So we, we, we still got to speak like that. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. And that one making those foolish accusations be delivered in the name of Jesus. That one trying to damage those over you, we deliver them in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And those who are condoning, my God, with that serial accusation lifestyle, we deliver you in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. When people are around you and they're close to you and they work with you and they do wrong, Bishop, I'm going to tell you, you have to clear yourself. Yeah. If your friend did something and you're always together and you don't agree with the bad they do, you got to clear yourself. Yes, and say, I heard what they do, but I'm not one of them. But you go silent, you are an accomplice. Yes, Bro, the police come on and see two of you coming out of the shop. Come on, somebody. Taking the two of you. Come on. You have to say, no, no, I was buying something in the shop. See my receipt here. You must clear yourself. I'm talking as a shepherd. I'm helping somebody. Out there, out there, not good. Out there, not good. Out there, not good. Out there, not good. Then this one I call obligation entrapment. What is obligation entrapment? There is this person that have lost um, any, any, any liking of the pulpit. They don't like it again. They say it's too hard. It's too strong. It's too, oh, it's too powerful. I don't like it again. You, you, you know? And they begin to do things to go softer. And have a softer approach towards the pulpit. A softer approach. And the Lord is revealing a young man. He's between 30 and 40. I'm giving you more of it. He's been and he's caught within it. He's caught within it because of obligation. He's caught within it because somebody has done good for him. He's caught within it because somebody has helped him. Oh. But this young man has virtue inside of him. And in the vision, my God, the Lord revealed that young man as they're trying to, they're trying to do their own training, their own, their own, like they have their own little, little, little Bible training, Bible class, and trying to show that what they're doing there is too much, it's not necessary. They are hard on the people. And that young man get up and say, uh-uh, I don't agree with you. I will stay, my God, with the authority and the power and the clarity, my God, and the precision that's coming from the pulpit. I release him in the name of Jesus. I deliver him in the name of Jesus.
And all these revelations, I pray that they are conditional, that God, my God, will intervene and help people. One more revelation. I got to give you one more revelation to strengthen you. I'm going to give you one more revelation. In 2017, God gave a revelation. And in the revelation, hmm, we have just come off the field. And we are at an airport, mm, getting ready to go through the immigration. And then a young man came up to me and said, the head of immigration want to see you. I got to tell this church. And, and, and the person came to me, that's one of us who were on the field. So he took me to the immigration. I was going to say, uh, uh, while he was taking me, he told me that he has, your, he has some of your preaching, some of your notes. So I said, whoa, what am I going to do? You know, I hope he has those normal ones that's not, you know, controversial. So we went to him. He's a tall man. Are you listening, church? Tall man. And the man looked at me and he said to me, you are the guard of the church. I don't fully get it. I believe he's the whole church he meant. Yeah. But he said, you are the guard of the church. And he said to me, hmm, I've been watching your people. I've been looking at your people. And as of today, as of today, I will relieve my people and your people will take over. Now, at this time, it's, not, it's no longer a, an airport. It's a big property. You know, it's now a big property. But hear this. Holy Ghost helped me to say it well. The, the person who came and called me, and said, the immigration officer want to see you was bulldozer. Was bulldozer. But that was 2017 when he was a little preacher man in Brooklyn. You got you to gotta, you gotta, you gotta follow me. He was a little preacher man in Brooklyn. Come on, somebody. I don't think he was even the senior pastor. He was there in Brooklyn, 2017. That was 2024. Are you there? Are you there? I am in Brooklyn, maybe a month ago, and I get a call. I get a call from Bulldozer. I get a call from Apostle Ranglin. And he said, there is a man. Hmm. Me and my wife went and looked at the place. Are you there? Went and looked at the place. And it's, it's a good alternative to where we are. It should be the next place for us to go. Glory to God. Now, now, shortly thereafter, for some reason, where we are, where we were, seemed to be getting shaky. And I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, let him call me. Let him call me. Come on now. Within minutes, this man called Bulldozer because he has no number for me. I have no number. He called Bulldozer to get to me. By the following morning, we were at his church. By the following morning, we were preaching at his church. I hit me somebody. Oh my God, I, I'm not saying it well. But here's the point I'm trying to tell you. How could it, how could it get from 2017 in the vision when it was him he knows not about this vision and God moved him from Brooklyn down to Georgia and arrived in Florida nobody knew we were going to Florida come on and allow it to be, to be fulfilled you have to understand that a pastor is an immigration officer a top is an immigration officer for heaven a, a, a top immigration officer is like a top spiritual leader. This spiritual leader is the son of God. Are you with me, somebody? Now Dr. V.T. Williams is past. He's now there. Come on, somebody. Are you there? All right, didn't, that didn't move you. Just this, you know. So everything happened, and we followed the Lord, and that's where you're worshiping now. Are you there? That's where you're worshiping now. <laughs> but, but remember in the vision 
<laughs> he said, and, and, and this is a tall man, just like I said, he's a very tall man. But in the vision, he said, I've been watching your people. Hmm? And as of now, I'm going to relieve my people. And I want your people to take over. Come on, you got to listen. Man, we just went by there, just this Sunday. Before I arrived, before he arrived, we were just on our way down there. And this great man of God sent him a text and said, let's work together. Let us. We're not just having you as a church renting from us. You're not, you're not getting me, somebody. Let us work together. Hear the, as of Sunday night coming. <laughs> All right, start up, everybody. Cause you don't get it. You don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> he said, let us work together, man. Let us work. I, I'm requesting for us to be together by Sunday coming. Sugar Stand up, everybody. Sugar How could that be? How could that be? How could it be so fast? So today we were praying and I said, Lord, it looks like we are going too slow. We are looking forward for the, for the vision to be. And guess what? He knows the vision. So we're looking forward for the vision to be fulfilled, but not so fast. Not so fast. He's already saying it. So listen, let's work together. Come on. Yeah, he already booking the visionary for his headquarters in Jamaica. And we thought that that was, that was going to be the only thing. He booked us for next week Sunday night to, to, to be together and for the visionary of Harvey Army to be the preacher. So, you know, so let me so let me encourage you. This thing is amazing. <laughs> this, uh, do you want to say this thing is amazing stuff? My God, this is amazing. 2017. What were you in Brooklyn? Executive pastor. My God, not the senior pastor. Executive pastor. I have no plan. Did you have any plan to go to Florida? Did I talk to you about even oh, going sir. to Georgia? Oh, when we announced he was going to Georgia, he knew not only by the spirit. He and his wife decided that's where they're going. Not knowing that I was going to announce in the pulpit. Come on, somebody. That somebody is assigned to Georgia. And then I said, who is it? And he and his wife came up. Not knowing that their names were already given to the veteran bishop in Florida, in, in Georgia. No, they went to Georgia. So since God sent it here, why don't you stay till you die? You're not listening to me. Come on. Since God sent you there, why don't you stay there till you die? No. At certain point, God said, Florida. Come on. And they end up in Florida. Why? To fulfill the prophecy. It's not like I'm saying it well. How he ended up, there was no plan to go to Florida. No plan whatsoever. We said we're not going to Florida. How would he end up there? Because it's prophesied by God. Come on, and folks, when they see prophecy fulfilled, they want to accuse ministries. Come on, somebody. The Bible says in John 18, 37, you have to know the truth to know God's voice. You have to speak truth for God to speak through you. Yes. You have the nerve one to attack. Come on, a voice. Come on, that you see with your eyes and hear with you hear things that you cannot deny. And have the nerve, the Lord built them. Sugar baba, shaka baba. The Bible says in Jeremiah 15 19, you cannot be God's voice and, unless you know the pressures from the vial. The Bible says in Psalm 25 14, he said, The secret of the Lord is with them that but fear him. Help me to pray for these I just told you earlier. The artificial cave, that person, please pray. The retribution accusation with somebody's accusing the leadership. As accusing them because of what happened. What happened that they cause upon themselves. You gotta pray about the accusation is coming. It is coming. It is coming. And the obligation in enchantment, that young man who find himself in that obligation that he'll arise, he'll stand up, my God, and say, no, I'll stand. 
I will stand. Everybody help me to pray. Then I'll let you go. One last prayer. One last prayer. Jesus. My God. My God. My God. Jesus. 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 That believer in that cave, Lord, deliver. Deliver, Lord. Deliver, Jesus. My God, that precious believer, Lord. Deliver, Lord. Cause them to come up out of that cave. I break every chains of entrapment. I break every chains of big islands. I break every chain of enchantment. I break every chain of charms. I break every chain of confusion and deception. I will break every chain of obligation. I break every chain of offers. I break every chain of enticement. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I break every chain of threats. My God, in the name of Jesus. And I speak deliverance right now. I break every chain of Jezebel. The impact of Jezebel. From off God's person. From off God's child. In the name of Jesus. I deliver that person being used by the Jezebel spirit. In the name of Jesus. I pray deliverance. Deliverance Lord. These are believers who have lost their way. Deliver them Lord. I pray the spell of the beast of all them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Retribution accusation. Deliver them Lord. Have mercy upon them. Have mercy Lord. Save them Jesus. Save them Lord. Have mercy Jesus. In every case of retribution Lord. We can only cry out for mercy. Mercy Jesus. Mercy Lord. God. Jesus. Jesus an obligation and enchantment. Deliver that young man. He'll not bow. He'll hold. He'll hold the line. He'll take a stance against the beast. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. God is moving.